This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we're going to take a look at the Arcom RC210 Advanced Repeater Controller. We're going to talk a little bit about what it can do for your club and your repeater, and we're going to purchase this as a kit, and we're going to build it. That's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Alrighty, so what is an RC-210 Advanced Repeater Controller? Well, this is a piece of equipment that you can connect or hook up to your repeater and it will start providing some additional services that typically the standard repeater does not, such as announcements and DTMF controls and a whole host of things that we can see here on the screen. This particular controller can actually operate and control up to three repeaters with flexible IDs, announcements, remote base operations, and as we go down the list here, command macros and so forth. Programmable access codes are another option with this particular controller. Now, we have controllers at El Cara, and uh, our club president, uh, AC4DM has been putting together and programming controllers for years, but many of the controllers uh, are outdated, no longer made, no longer supported. With the RCOM RC210 Advanced Repeater Controller, this is modern equipment with modern programming that brings our club's controllers up to 2022, and there are continuous updates to these. As we continue to go down the list here on the website, you can see we also have auto patch, rack mount enclosure options, and the like. And one of the things we like about it is it works with the Yesu based repeaters running in AMS mode. Now we're looking at the uh, website, and again, I want to say this right off the bat, we are not sponsored by Arcom. We're doing this because our club uh, really likes this particular product. So no sponsorship, we're just doing this because we have purchased a couple of their, three of their controllers actually, and uh, we're going to be building this one. When you purchase this controller, you have a couple of options during checkout, and that is to purchase it already built in an enclosure with a front face, or you can build it or purchase it and build it as a kit. And building it as a kit is way more fun. Now you might get a little bit antsy and say, but what if I mess something up? You can buy the individual components separately if you need additional parts. Uh, and as we go through the parts list here in a minute, you can see what comes with it. And if you wanna buy some extras or if you happen to solder something incorrectly, you can uh, get replacements. So we've got uh, three manuals, four actually, in our uh, kit that we had delivered to us because we also got the real-time uh, clock. But here's the assembly instructions. And as we scroll down, here's the parts list that I was referencing a moment ago. Uh, one of the first things you got to do with any of these kits is actually go through the parts list and make sure you have all of the parts. There's a lot of little pieces in here of resistors, capacitors, and the like. So you want to start checking off all of these and making sure that you have the correct numbers. And as we continue to scroll down, you can see, you know, we've got the resistors, potentiometers, uh, and some miscellaneous parts. So there's a lot here that will need to be installed. And again, this is what's going to make this controller more fun than just installing it already made. In addition, as we scroll down, we get into the construction notes and instructions on how to go ahead and start putting it together. And in this part one of our video, we're going to actually focus on this construction page. You can see here we're ready to begin construction, keep in, keep the tip of your soldering iron bright and clean. And then it talks about the IC sockets, which is what we're going to focus on today, plus the resistor banks that we installed there on the right hand side. In part two, we'll install the rest of the components. So just taking a look at those parts on this page, we're going to install and begin the process of putting this controller together. I also wanted to include, uh, not a schematic, this is just a board layout, but this is some of the document, documentation that comes with the assembly instructions. And we use this uh, board layout assembly uh, picture a lot as we were going through trying to find where all of the resistors go. There's a lot of different resistors and capacitors of various um, strengths, or not strengths, but uh, 
uh, capacitance and resistance, and you need to make sure they're in the correct place on the board. And they're all numbered, all the UCs are numbered and so forth. So a wonderful page to uh, keep track of where you are in the process. Now we're looking at the operations and programming manual. We're not gonna spend any time on that in this video, but just wanted to kind of show it to you. And uh, we had hard copies in the box. I'm not sure if AC4DM printed those or if it came that way, but uh, I believe it came with all of the manuals. You can also download these from the website. Here's the hardware manual. Again, we'll just quickly scroll down just to show you this particular manual or part of it, not the whole thing. But uh, you can see the hardware reference there, which we'll highlight here in just a moment, from power, carrier operated switch, sub-audible tone decoders, uh, LEDs, IO connectors, audio levels, fans, and so on. A lot of good documentation with this controller. Easy to read as well. And then we have all of the features. And folks, this is one of the reasons we're moving to this particular controller. The uh, controllers that we've used in the past for our club, again, are older and are no longer manufactured. So if you need any support, somebody in the club's gonna know, have to know how it all works. With the Arcom controllers, this will modernize our shack and bring some of our equipment up to the modern age. And there's good documentation. So this is uh, showing you what came in the box. Uh, there's one of the manuals. Here's the assembly manual. And just before I started showing you the manuals, you can see the box there on the bottom left with all of the pieces and parts that it came with. Plus we ordered some of the options, including the real time clock, which I think is the last one I show you. Yeah, right here. So very nice. So there's a lot of goodness in this box, but again, it's just a bunch of parts. And as you can see here from the parts list, we need to make sure all of the parts that we ordered are in that box so that as we begin assembly, we won't come up missing anything. So now we're doing an inventory of all of the parts. This took us probably a good 15 or 20 minutes because you need to read the, the bands on all of the resistors to make sure that you have the correct resistors. Uh, look at your capacitors, make sure they're of the right capacitance, the UCs, the chips, and everything. And what AC4DM has uh, always gotten in the habit of doing is not only checking everything off to make sure we have everything, but as we go through and inventory all the parts, we put them in little pill bottles so that they're isolated and easy to access and get to. And so you can see here, we've got three resistors in that particular little bottle, and then we've got some more here, and this will keep everything nice and separated and easy to locate. These are all the pill bottles of the various parts. Lots and lots of bottles here. But as you'll see, when we get to the end of this particular video, we will have used about a third of those. So we've already actually placed a couple of the sockets on the, uh, the board here, the PC board, uh, and have them oriented correctly with the notch at the top, which also fits the silk screen uh, on the board itself, printed on the board. And KD6FTR, Mike, who's a relatively new member to our club, has really good solder skills. He's actually worked on projects for many years. And so he's gonna be doing the soldering today in part number one. And what we've done is we've turned the PC board over and the sockets have already been put in their place and he's going to begin soldering these pins and he's going to do some diagonal pins first just to keep the socket in place and you can see it doesn't take very much he's very good at this of course you need a steady hand and he's going to do the diagonally uh, pin there and that way that socket won't lift out even if you were to move the board and he's going to do the same thing on the socket uh, on the, the right hand side there and now he's just gonna go pin to pin. Again, it doesn't take a lot of solder here. You wanna be very careful, make sure you don't blob it. And we don't want a blob of solder to accidentally short two pins together. So he's gonna take his time as he goes through this and make sure that we get just a touch of solder on each of those pins. And for the sake of condensing the video down, we're gonna jump through some of this pretty quickly. Now, again, if somebody in your club has some solder skills, see if you can enlist their aid in helping you with this. Uh, Mike just happened to catch the short end of the straw this particular day, and I'm filming. But again, Mike enjoys doing this. So this was uh, a good way for him to get back into uh, doing some of these kinds of projects. Notice that he's using a very fine tip here to make sure that he can actually get just enough solder on these pins. 
Another uh, socket over here, you can see this one's smaller with fewer pins. And again, we'll just shorthand this a little bit. He's just getting the diagonals right now to make sure that the sockets don't come uh, away from the PC board. And he's gonna finish up on this socket, just making sure <clears throat> it'll stay in place. So we were done with the socket installation and there you can see them now in place. And we'll put the chips in towards the very end, but getting the socket soldered in is an important element of this installation. Next, we moved on to, on page number four here of the assembly, the resistor installs. And all of your resistors have uh, bands on them to show their actual resistance. Uh, you know, just a few ohms all the way up to thousands of ohms. They have to be in the correct place on this PC board. The documentation as well as that PC board layout that I showed you a little bit earlier helps us place these in the correct place. And the silk screening on the board also is labeled just like the picture that I showed you as well. So it's very relatively easy to find where each of them goes. In this case, Mike is going to insert the resistors by bending the leads on either side and then poking the uh, metal leads through the holes, then moving them outwards a little bit so that the resistor won't try to come out, and then soldering those leads and trimming off the excess. There was probably about three dozen of these resistors of various resistances uh, that needed to be installed. So this takes a little bit of time, but you, that's one of the things that I would want to encourage you to take your time. In this case, we had a bank of resistors and this is not an IC. You can see all of those legs coming off. Uh, these are just, this is a bank of resistors used for various uh, functions on the controller. And he's just going down the line here. And then all of those uh, legs sticking out there have to be trimmed off. And here we've got the board completed in this part number one. You can see the sockets and the resistors are now in place. We still have capacitors and transistors and some other components that need to be installed, but this was a good first day of putting this together. And you can see the pill bottles there in the top that are turned over. Those are all of the pieces that we've installed. The rest of the pill bottles are things we have yet to install. So as you can see, a controller is a very important piece of gear, and it's going to allow your repeater to have more functionality through uh, announcements and a whole host of other things. Stay tuned to part number two as we get into the rest of this build. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP. Stay tuned, give us a comment, subscribe, and 73.